accompanying notes for the beautiful composition by my dear friend Leotieres Lieche. Alafia, which we recorded on Virtual Berlin, in which I had the privilege of performing with Leotieres. We lost Leotieres a couple weeks ago, uh, very suddenly, due to COVID. And I felt it very personally. Um, I love this man. I just, I got to tell you, I recognized him as a kindred spirit. He was all about Afro-Brazilian uh, music, and I'm all about Afro-Latin music. I'm all about recognizing Africa in our music, and that's where he's at. Um, and he created an orchestra that has almost the same diagrammatic back, the same shape that ours does. It just I saw in him such a brother and such a tremendous loss. We had the privilege of performing with him at Lincoln Center Outdoors. We had the privilege of performing with him at Temple University, uh, involving another dear friend of mine who I love very much, Steve Bernstein. Uh, if you saw Orchestra Humpiles, and you saw the Afro-Latin Jazz Orchestra, and you heard the way he writes, and you heard the way I write, and the way we compose, and the way we play, and the things that we think, and the things we do, you would be amazed that somebody like Leitieres exists existed and will exist forever through the beautiful music that he has graced us with. Um, the performance tonight begins with uh, Intruso from Temple University, which is a piece that I wrote that uh, was performed by Orchestra Jerome Pilez. And man, this, this orchestra is crazy, man. You gotta check out this drummer. This drummer is so, so bad. He's such, such a crazy, funky, I mean, all of them all the percussionists are incredible musicians. Please enjoy this La Plaza Friday. My name is Arturo Farrell. I'm the artistic director and founder of the Afroland Jazz Alliance. And uh, please enjoy the incredible visionary work of a grandmaster, Letieres Vieche. <laughs>
Prince is a is a, a really interesting musician because he's very uh, very much a trained musician, trained in Austria in the conservatory. So he has the whole uh, Western European voicing harmony and stuff down pat, but he's also deeply uh, part of the Afro-Brazilian world. So he understands the not only because it's not rhythms we're talking about, we're talking about religions and there's a there's a whole lifestyle that is part of the religious observance of Afro uh, folkloric a religious life and he knows that stuff and so it's really amazing there's not many people on the planet who can seamlessly blend those worlds quite as well as the yeah, it's does. it's inconceivable i don't think anyone's because because many people study european harmony and get really good at it it's science it's not really that difficult it takes time that's all and afro-cuban afro-brazilian this this kind of religious life it's something that people often do. It's not a big deal. You do it like anything. Often, that kind of people in that religion stay within a very kind of rural setting. Yeah. Not all the time, but that's kind of where that stuff lives. So to have both happening is.
Let me begin by telling you one of the most beautiful experiences of my life as a musician was meeting you, playing with your musicians, playing your music, and the privilege of, of hearing you teach and hearing you speak, and do we still play your music, and that was, it, for me, that was one of the high points of my musical life.
uma das, do, das experiências mais altas da vida musical dele foi conhecê-lo, tocar sua música, e, e a, a, eles ainda estão tocando a sua música, e, então para ele é uma das a, experiências mais altas da vida, da carreira dele musical. Eu, eu posso dizer o mesmo para nós, foi uma experiência única ter a participação dele e a minha participação com a orquestra dele, para mim, foi uma experiência de aprendizado muito grande, de saber a possibilidade de qual a linguagem que eu usaria para poder fazer com que os músicos da orquestra dele entendessem essas minúcias da música que, eu, que é muito particular, que é da, dos ritmos daqui de Salvador. E eles tiveram um resultado muito positivo. So he he feels the same way, Arturo, and uh, it was a, a deep learning experience for him to come and play with your orchestra, and to discover how he can translate the details of Brazilian music um, to to uh, pe people who aren't familiar with the intricacies of the rhythms of Bahia, Brazil. A lot of people have very simple notions of what the music of Bahia and uh, what candomblé is and what Afro-Brazilian music is. Can you tell us in a few words uh, for our listeners? Uh, uh, well, you don't, have, you don't have to give us the secret, but help us understand uh, more about the beautiful, beautiful music of your people. Às vezes as pessoas têm uma ideia muito simplificada do que, que é, o que, que são os ritmos da Bahia, da, do candomblé. E, então o maestro Arturo está perguntando se você pode dar a, a essência, talvez não tudo, mas a, a, para as pessoas entenderem o que, que é, a, quais são a, a, a música brasileira, a música da Bahia. Olha, eu prefiro falar sobre música popular brasileira. Eu vou te dizer os trechos pequenos, porque vai ser grande. Eu prefiro falar sobre a música popular brasileira e as matrizes africanas na música popular brasileira. Eu estou falando aí da bossa nova, eu estou falando do choro, eu estou falando do frevo, eu falo do maracatu. Essas músicas todas têm o mesmo, é, o mesmo fundamento de rigor de estrutura, de forma de organização, né, vamos dizer, de forma de organização e de transmissão. Então, o princípio para essa música popular brasileira, ela parte é, da música ancestral do, do qual a Bahia preservou bem. Essa é a primeira parte que eu vou falar. Então, so he, he, he would like to speak about Brazilian popular music and the African roots and um, patterns found in that, in the music of Choro, of Frevo, of Bossa Nova and um que que eu deixei por fora? Maracatu Maracatu um and so and so yeah so that's that's the area that he's he's going to speak and specifically Brazilian popular music and the African influences and patterns found in it Beautiful Also the organizational forms he said Yes Isso isso já Então o que eu quis dizer é que essa organização ela é, ela, ela faz parte do, do patrimônio da música popular brasileira como um todo. A, a, a diferença é que a Bahia tivemos a sorte de, de, das matrizes que gerou a música brasileira. Por exemplo, a matriz do piano de Tom Jobim, eu acredito que vem de um toque conhecido do candomblé, que foi oriundo do Recôncavo da Bahia, por exemplo. Faça essa esse link rápido, assim, eu estou exagerando. A matriz que o piano do Tom Jobim, ela, a gente faz o histórico dela e vai dar, no final do século XIX, a, a, um, a um tipo de música que saiu do Recôncavo da Bahia para o Rio de Janeiro, por exemplo. Sim, yeah, so ele está falando sobre as estruturas de toda a música brasileira e como elas estão presentes, especificamente na música da Bahia, And, and the example he's giving is that the, the piano, the, the way Jobim played the, the piano, can be traced um, to Bahia, to, to a certain structures. That, and because Bahia has preserved um, more than anywhere um, the African inheritance in music. 
No, no, yeah, tracing Tabia back Tabia. to the late 1800s. 1800s, yeah. Isso, isso. Porque no final do século XIX, teve uma, 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 uma leva grande de baianos que foi para o Rio, por causa que o Rio de Janeiro era o lugar das oportunidades para a família real. É importante colocar historicamente yeah. por que é que esses baianos foram para o Rio. Yeah. Eu não estou dizendo que só teve chegada de escravo na Bahia, não é isso. O primeiro lugar que chegou escravos é São Paulo, Rio de Janeiro chegou, mas eu estou falando especificamente do samba brasileiro. O samba brasileiro, nós hoje, pelos estudos, entendemos que vem de um grupo étnico nesse deslocamento do final do século XIX. So, at the end of the 19th century, there was a, a migration from Bahia to Rio um, because of the economic opportunities in Rio. And that is one of the elements that um, created samba because bringing, bringing that influence from Bahia to Rio is what uh, generated uh, specifically samba. One of, one of the... O Rio, o Rio, ok, ok. O Rio, no, no, já no. Tocava, o Rio já tocava outro tipo de samba, só para saber. Já tinha um samba que era mais ligado ao nundu, ao machiste, que gerou um tipo de samba até esse período. Mas depois com a chegada desse, desse grupo de baiano, esse samba se transforma no, no samba nacional que ficou mundialmente conhecido. Essa figura de samba que a gente fala. E, so, um exemplo um, do samba. Rio already had a, a certain type of samba that was a, a mixture of Lundu, which is a colonial dance. Um, and do jango, do, do, do jongo, jongo também, do jongo. jongo the, uh, the jongo and the machixe. And, and th those were um, the, what consisted of samba in Rio. But when with this uh, migration from Bahia um, to Rio, the, what developed was the samba that became the internationally known samba.
to me, what was also profound about meeting Maestro Lietieres was seeing him teach. And it, it affirms what I believe that when you're a musician, whatever you do, you're a teacher. And so if you're going to be giving lessons, you should know what you're talking about. But I remember the beautiful lecture you gave uh, and the beautiful lecture you gave about the specific places that this music comes from. And you're so knowledgeable and you're, you're such a scholar. And I wonder if you could talk about, is there a separation between the musician and the scholar, the, the, the teacher, or is that part of the magic, part of the... A pergunta é se existe uma separação entre o dentro de você o músico, o educador e o, o pesquisador. Eu 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 eu, eu vejo o músico uma coisa só, mas tem uma coisa quando eu estou pensando na pesquisa, eu acho que eu eu, eu acesso processos e que na, quando eu estou criando ou quando eu estou tocando é, é mais confortável vamos dizer assim não é que é mais tenso mas é assim eu tenho poucas respostas por exemplo é, eu não consigo é, não é fácil entender é, ou ensinar ou pensar a música brasileira que é baseada na matriz africana usando ferramenta de música europeia por exemplo so uh the for him it's it's all it's it's all facets of the same and and when he studies um when he's a, a, a researcher studying um sometimes to translate that the the african patterns um it it there's some difficulty in in educating that me ajuda live Usando as ferramentas oh, da, da cultura oh, yeah, europeia. Ah, os toys, os toys. toys. Quer dizer, yeah. eu estou usando a lente de uma cultura para explicar uh -huh. a outra. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, the difficulty arises when, when he's um, translating the African patterns using European instruments. And, and so it's like looking at one culture with, with uh, European glasses, um, looking at the African patterns. And so, We're... We're, go we're going. Por que isso, professor? Porque aonde eu, eu leciono, aonde eu dou aula, essas escolas mais antigas, elas já são todas formatadas em um pensamento de musical, somente na questão de ritmo, num pensamento europeu, eurocêntrico. So, um, and the difficulty is that where he teaches. Um, the structure is Eurocentric, and so, yeah. What I was going to say is we're going through a crisis. I'm, I'm a professor at UCLA, and we're going through a big crisis right now because of the uh, 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 political and racial uh, truths that are being discovered about America. We're discovering that uh, the Eurocentric canon has, uh, uh, is, is inaccurate that in order to be a real equipped, in order to be really equipped as a human being and as an artist, you have to understand uh, Bach and uh, Brazil. You have to understand, uh, 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 you have to understand Gamelon music and John Coltrane. And so we look, we're looking at a crisis in theory in our, in our, in our world, because we, we feel, I feel, and I say that we're, not teaching students theory unless we teach them as much of the, the 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 you know the global way of organizing rhythms and sounds there's so many ways to organize music throughout the planet and they're all valid they're all valuable and so we're going through a, a, a big crisis trying to get away from eurocentric you know, don't no parallel fits, the uh, serial tone road, all that stuff. It's it's very important, but much more important to have a balance of global organization for music. And I wonder if, if they're going through anything like that. Mas é isso que eu quero dizer. Eu estou falando isso. So he's eu, he's, eu acho, he's saying the same não, thing. Yeah. É, eu não tô, não, não acho que deva abrir mão da cultura europeia. Não é isso que eu falei. O que eu acho é que não tem um equilíbrio. 
por exemplo, eu acho que não é possível a escrita musical, vê se ele concorda comigo, vou perguntar para ele, ele concorda que a escrita musical não é suficiente para poder representar os micro-ritmos? Pergunte a ele isso. So he's saying that uh, that he's going through a, a similar um, experience, and it's not that he wants to do away with European music. Not at all. There's an unbalance, um, and so and his question um, to you is that in in writing in the musical notation, um, often the intricacies and nuances of the rhythms are lost, and he micro ritmos, micro ritmos, the micro rhythms. Um, are often lost in the musical I, location. I have, I have a theory. The theory is that you can write out uh, Afro-based rhythms and you can read them, but it's not the same thing as respecting them. And it's not the same thing as growing up, listening and yes, loving yes, music yes, from that yes. part of the world. So, it, so because we do it all the time, we have to write music for people who don't know this music to play. But nothing, it, one one eighth note in the somebody's in somebody else's hands yes, can yes, sound different yes. than in a European musician's hands. It's it's então, it's. It... A minha sugestão é usar as duas culturas em equilíbrio, como fez o jazz. O jazz escreve jazz, jazz escreve da forma europeia, mas toca em swing, timba com o batimba, mas escreve ta 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 ta, entende? O jazz. Yeah. Eu vou fazer o mesmo com a música a brasileira, afro-cubana. É ensinar os músicos a, a, a interpretar em clave, mas não, não precisa forçar a escrita com muito sinal. Então, eu acho que tem que usar oralidade, oralidade, hum. em comum acordo com a tradição da yeah. música europeia. Usar so, as duas culturas em equilíbrio. Pronto. So he's saying that uh, jazz does this, it, it... It, ex, uh, it expresses um, both cultures on a, a more even level. Um, but what's, the inf what's uh, important is to have the written um, experience of playing music uh, equal to the oral tradition because uh, it it's, uh, burdens the written music to try to add all the details, all the nuances. And so better to teach um, orally, you know, with the oral tradition, the feel for a swing um, eighth note as as opposed to w what it looks like on paper as opposed to trying to notate what the swing is isso já isso já ser matéria dentro da escola os professores serem preparados a usar as duas culturas da oralidade em comum acordo com a escrita tradicional porque a escrita é só uma ferramenta ela não é o fim a escrita a notação ela é uma ferramenta ela não é o fim então hum. precisamos preparar o músico no corpo dele, no corpo. Oh, e é isso que eu faço com o método que eu tenho aqui no livro que eu faço, da minha escola. Eu preparo o primeiro sem instrumento. Eu treino o músico ritmicamente, que é a matéria mais difícil. Olha bem, se eu quiser coisa de harmonia, tem 400 hum. livros de harmonia. Hum. Mas quando vai tratar de ritmo, tem que ser no corpo, não tem jeito. So he's saying that um, what's important is to train the teachers and train them equally in the notation and the oral tradition because notation is not the end product, it's a tool. And so what he does is he trains musicians in their bodies first uh, without notation. And, and that's his contribution is, uh, is a rhythmic training in the body, in the oral tradition um, that precedes the notation.
Thank you for uh, hanging out with us tonight and enjoying the incredible music of the Grandmaster, a great, a great friend to all of us and a guiding spirit who has joined the ancestors, the amazing Letiatis Lieche. I want to uh, introduce the members of uh, Orchestra Rumpiles. I'm going to mispronounce their names because I'm not Brazilian, but I want to because these are such great musicians. Gabi Guedes, Luisinho de Jeje, Ikaro Sa, Jorge Wallace, Tiago Nunes, Emerson Taquari, Kaina de Jeje, Atabacaria. Those are the percussionists, the amazing percussionists you just heard. The reeds were Andre Becker, Paulinho de Andrade, Ronnie Scott Jr., Leonardo Roca, Vinicus Freitas, uh, saxophones, baritone saxophone player, deep man. Uh, Joatan Nascimento, Joao Teoria, Rudy Machado, Guiga Scott, and Danilo Brito on the trumpets. The trombones were Hugo San, Juraci Almeida, Vanilson Araujo, we are in Brooklyn, Gilmar Chavez, Matias Child, Adelson Rodriguez, Fernando Roca in the trombones. The quintet, it was Letieres Lieche, flute and tenor sax. Marcelo Galter, bass and musical direction. Tito Oliveira's drums. Lutzen Galter, piano and keyboards. Juicinho de Jeje, percussion. And Mou Brazil, convidado on the guitar. The Afro Latin Jazz Orchestra, of course. Uh, Roman Filiu, Alejandro Aviles, Ivan Renta, Jeremy Powell, Larry Bustamante in our saxophone section. Our trumpet, Seneca Black, Adam O'Fall, Brian Davis, and Rachel Therian. Our trombones, Rafi Malkel, Mariel Bilson, Abdul Rahman, Amer, and Earl McIntyre. In the rhythm section, Vince Cherico, Bam Rodriguez, Carly Carlos Maldonado, Kesel Jimenez, Myself, Gustavo Didalva, on Atabacus and Everton, Isidora, and Kaichichi. Um, there you go. Massive undertaking. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Leitieres, Lietre, and Orchestra Rumpeles, and Quintet in the afro Latin Jazz Orchestra. Thank you for hanging out with us this Friday.
Thank you.